to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17 says, I will restore health unto you and heal you of your wounds. There are many of you watching today that need restoration of your health. I know we have all experienced situations where we needed our health restored. Well, on today's program, my mother is going to share her testimony of how God restored her health. 25 years ago, she was near the point of death. And believe me, we were praying for her. She was confessing the word and 25 years later, she's sitting here today, so God intervened. I would like for you to welcome today my mother, Peggy Capps. Thank you. Thank you, Mother, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Good to be here. I had spoken with Mother about being on the show, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate her agreeing to do this all these years later. Uh, she and Dad recorded some shows explaining uh, what had happened to her, her testimony, and uh, I watched it again recently, and I got so much more out of it, even the second time around. And so I want to show you some of these clips from about 24 years ago, 23 years ago, something like that. And I want you to see her testimony. Let's see that clip right now. My liver was not in the best of conditions, but they didn't know what was wrong with it. But he said, you know, I think sometime you're going to have to have a liver transplant. Well, I told him, I said, no, my liver's going to be healed. I'm not going to have to have a liver transplant. I thought, well, God's going to give me a new liver. He's going to somehow make my liver work and function again like it should. But it didn't come the way I thought it was going to come. Finally, I agreed to have a liver transplant. I didn't want to up to this point of time. Finally, the Lord gave me a little story that I'd heard Charles tell about the man that there was a flood and the water was rising and rising. And he prayed and he said, Dear Lord, please save me. And the Lord didn't, didn't anything happen for a while. Then this boat came by, the water was rising, and they said, would you like a ride out? And he said, no, said, God's going to save me. So the water's still rising, and he's passed up this opportunity, and then somebody comes over with a helicopter and offers to lift him out. He's on the roof, and he said, no, God's going to save me. And the next scene, the man's in heaven, and uh, he says, God, I thought you were going to save me. He said, I sent you two chances and you passed both of them up. So I, what could I do? <laughs> so that, that story came to my mind and I thought, Lord, here they have made every provision. They've got the liver ready for me. I'm on the list, I'm ready. And all I need to do is say yes, rather than stand for my way of healing to come. I can take this one and it'll all be done quickly. And so I told him, yes, I would go ahead and have it. And I did. And it was almost miraculous the way that it all happened. Well, <laughs> it was miraculous the way it all happened, Mom. Wasn't the way I planned. <laughs> no, I know. I know that's true. And um, I was thinking as I watched, watched all of that, that really there's so many different parts to your liver transplant and look here you are today all these years later sitting here in health i have watched you and i have been totally amazed at how you put the word of god to work in your your life and in your body um, i'm not going to take over the whole time because i wanted you to be here to talk about it but I just think about so many pieces that came together for that transplant. And um, I'd just like for you to, to share how, how you put the word to work on your behalf in that situation. Well, I confess the word. Fortunately, I was living with a man that taught <laughs> the importance of confessing what God says about you. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did that. 
but you know things didn't really improve that much and uh, I kept on because this was over a period of probably two years maybe even a little more and uh, so I just I kept on doing what I knew to do but I kept on wanting it done my way that was the problem <laughs> I was just expecting the Lord to just redo my liver and make it whole and well again and I at times I would get a little bit discouraged when things would happen that you know I knew weren't according to what it was supposed to be going the way things were supposed to be going and uh, but I just kept on because I really believed that I was going to get well I, I really I never doubted that and I don't know why but I, I believed I was going to be well but uh, the Lord was had to deal with me finally like we saw on that clip <laughs> and said, I love, okay. I love that story. <laughs> okay, you want to do it your way and stay like you are or do you want to do it what I've prepared for you? This is the way that you need to go. And uh, so therefore I did and it was just miraculous the way things worked out when I finally agreed to go God's way instead of my way. There were so many pieces that came together yep. that people don't realize um, you know the the first the first is that um, we had to find out what to even do for you mm -hmm. because the doctors said something's wrong and we don't know what's wrong yeah, that's right and so we went through those little circles for a long long time we and did. Um, you know finally you know the doctor at the Mayo told you you know that well Miss Caps I believe you're gonna have to have a liver transplant <laughs> and you said nope <laughs> not gonna do it. <laughs> I didn't believe it was uh, going to be necessary <laughs> um, but it turned out it was if I wanted to be well and quit being sick all the time and being yellow my eyes I was in sad shape by the time yeah. I finally decided to take the route that was best for me at that time yes. which was having a liver transplant. <laughs> right well you know you have you were the one that was ill and the family, you know, Dad and I, Beverly, I mean, we were all on the outside of this looking, we were in it, and yet we weren't the one that was ill, so we were all dealing with our different parts of this. Yeah. And you know, when you have a family member that is very ill and near the point of death, uh, it has an effect on you. And we prayed, uh, there was one night that I was praying, I, I knew that if mother didn't have a liver transplant, she was gonna die. And you say, well, that doesn't agree with the word. <laughs> well, the word says that he will restore health. And some way, somehow, God was going to have to restore health to my mother. And I was That's praying right. that night. And that night as I interceded in the spirit, and I was praying in the Spirit. This is what you do when you don't know how to pray as you ought. You pray in the Spirit. And so I was praying in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. And I sensed death. And I rebuked death. And I took authority over it. And there was a release that night. And I had total confidence after that point. You had still not agreed to have a transplant. <laughs> but I had total confidence after that night that you were going to be okay. Thank the Lord <laughs> for that prayer. <laughs> uh. Well, you know, it's, it's hard for me to put myself in your place, what you were going through. And at the same time, we talked about some things yesterday. It's hard. It would be difficult for you to put yourself in my place as your daughter, watching you go through this and knowing that, you know, I'm about to lose my mother way too early in life. I wasn't willing to do that. Yeah. I wasn't willing to let you go. And now, 24 years later, as I look, look on this whole situation, I see that the entire CAPS ministry would have been different. It was so important that Peggy CAPS live her life to the fullest extent, and it was important for you to be a part of the ministry. Dad was powerfully anointed of the Holy Spirit, he ministered the word, and yet there were things behind the scene that were involved in running a ministry and keeping things running smoothly that only Peggy Caps could do. <laughs> and well, still today, we rely on your wisdom. Well, you know, I, 
had heard the word and heard the word and heard the word. And I, I don't know really what happened to me, why I re refused to go ahead and do it at a time when they told me I could get on the list and I needed to do it. But I, I don't know, maybe it's my nature that I'm, I'm stubborn for some things and I just wanted to hold out. And actually, I guess you might even say I was trying to make God do it my way. And God doesn't do it your way. <laughs> and uh, so finally, you know, it just got to the point to where I was in such poor health and things began to happen to me that I could tell, you know, this is not working the way I'm saying it's going to work. And then the Lord revealed that story to me and kind of shocked me and <laughs> into saying, okay, let's take another look at this. <laughs> that was that was God's way of, of getting through to it you. It was. It truly was. And you know, it, as far as the timing, though, uh, there were so many things that were lining up because it, at first, you know, this was extremely experimental. Liver Back transplants day, yes. were experimental, and actually you had passed the age at which they would do a liver right. transplant, and in order for you to get one right. a few, a couple of months before, they increased the age so you were now qualified That's again. That's right. They did. So there were just so many things that fell into place. Um, the insurance. Remember the mm -hmm. thing about the insurance? The insurance was not going to pay because right. they said it was experimental. Right. And God moved on your behalf and uh, used one of the doctors that you had here to see to it that yep. it would be covered. Yes, he did. I and had a wonderful Christian doctor at home that uh, really helped me, you know, and believed and agreed with me, you know, that I was going to get well and be healthy again and, uh, and that Mayo too, they were, I had a really special doctor that was with me all the way, you know, and I really got in there and tried to get me on the list and I guess did because, you know, there's always a list oh, for a transplant yes. of any kind, yes. you know, but God was so good to me, it's just hard to say, you know, how much God loves us and yes. takes care of us if we just believe Him to do that and if we do the things that He tells us to do. And uh, it's just so important to rely on the Lord. I don't know where, where we would be if it wasn't for the Lord and what He does for us daily. He daily loads us, loads us with benefits of all kinds. I just have all kinds of things just out of the way things that you wouldn't even think about that the Lord does for you. And you yeah. After it's over, you say, well, thank you, Lord. I know you did that because that didn't just happen. And he's, oh, he's so good to us. I just yes. can't thank him enough for how good he is to well, us. I can't <clears throat> ever thank him enough for restoring my mother to me and to our family. Uh, I'm just forever grateful to the Lord. And people say, well, what about faith? What about this? What about the fact my mother is still alive? Praise the Lord. What about the <laughs> fact that she is still alive? And she has helped so many people. We've had calls and calls and letters from people that have asked her <clears throat> to talk to them. And um, I wanted to, you know, make this available for the first time to people. It is a, we're going to make a DVD and it's going to have the television show that we saw from 20 something years ago where you gave it and then the show today where you're still alive and <laughs> kicking so to speak. Yeah. You're alive and healthy and we're going to offer that in the uh, little booklet God's Creative Power for Healing. Uh, did you ever confess anything out of that book while you were believing sure, for healing? Sure, I did every day. <laughs> God's creative not every. I might miss once in a while, but not often. <laughs> God's creative power for healing, and then the audio book, God's creative power for healing. We're going to put that together in a package with a free pamphlet called uh, "Double Curse, Double Cure." Anyway, that's on your screen right now. I wanted to mention that in case you have to leave the show. So, praise the Lord. When I ask you the question, Mom, when we're talking about your liver transplant, did you ever confess the word? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was sort of a joke, maybe a, a trick question, because there's no question in my mind that you were confessing the word. Sure I was. And, um, 
I know that you've talked to a lot of people, and I heard you say something. I don't remember when it was. Maybe it was one one of the programs, but you said that you use the word, confess the word daily, and you talk to people and gave them this book, and you asked them, "Have you confessed the book?" And they would say, "Oh yes, I read the book." Yes. And I, I would read the make book. it very, very plain. You have to say this out loud. You don't just read these yeah. confessions. But it's good to read them, and that's great. But that's not where the power is. The power, Hebrews 4.12 tells us that God's Word is full of power, yeah. active, energizing, operating. How do you get that to work for you? You speak it out loud. You get it down in your inner man. It doesn't work in just the soulish realm. You have to speak God's Word until it's so much a part of you that you won't let anything come out except what God says about you. That's when it begins to work. It begins to grow and get bigger inside you, and you think, yes, I can do this. God is inside me, and I can accomplish whatever it is I need. I know that God has done that many times for me. I have confessed the Word over things, and, and sometimes it doesn't happen instantly. For instance, I was reading the other day Oral Roberts' testimony of when he was healed of tuberculosis, and he was in—he'd been in bed for five months. Yeah. He went and was prayed for. They took him, and he was prayed for. And he said that sudden burst of healing came over him, and he was made whole right then. Whole—that means you're complete, you're fulfilled. And he said, oh, it was wonderful. And he goes home and he's all excited. And then after a few days, why, he wasn't feeling that sudden burst of power that hit him. And he said one day he was leaning up in a chair, leaning up against the house, and his mother came around the house and looked at him and said, Oral, said, uh, you're not feeling like you're healed today, are you? And he said, no, Mama said, said that power, that sudden burst I had, I don't feel that now. I feel kind of weak. And uh, she said, Earl, she said, you're healed, and said, what you need to do is you need to go in the house, lay down on the bed, and take about a 10-minute or 20-minute nap. and." Don't get inside the bed. Don't throw the sheets back. She said, you lay down on top of the bed, and you take your rest, and when you get up, you'll be feeling better. And he said he did that, and it occurred to him during this period of time, or it occurred to me after I read all of it, that it was a year before he was totally healed and totally well. Somehow in my mind and in my eyes, I, that had never occurred to me that somebody would have to keep working on confessions and keep working on being healed because if you stop that, that lets your body go back to normal. Your body doesn't completely behold a lot of times. It's not completely well at the moment that you receive a miracle like that. And many people have discovered that you have to work on it. You have to keep your mindset on what the Word said that you are healed. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. No weapon formed against me will prosper. My body has to get up and act like a healed body. And yeah. you have to keep going. And you can't just rely on what happened one time a long time ago. And that was made so plain to me, and it helped me so much. And I thought, I wish I had known that a few years ago, because my idea of it was, once you're healed in a miracle like that, his lungs were completely ruined, and he was just in terrible shape. And it took him time for his body to get back to what it needed to be. and. 
so many times I think we, we don't even consider that fact. We think, okay, wow, well, I'm healed and I'll just do what I want to. Well, that body may not be completely well and you need to work on it. So anyway, that impressed me to a great degree when, when I read that. It was a shock, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anybody teach that or say anything about it before. Well, I know, um, you know, this is sort of what got us into some of these discussions is talking about that, what Oral Roberts had to say because I, I kind of always, you know, I thought about Brother Hagen that got healed from, you know, he was on his deathbed. I thought about Oral Roberts was healed from, his deathbed, and in my mind, I'm using the word healed. That means that someone prayed for them, or like Brother Hagen, he read the word, and, and then it, they were healed. Right, right. They were healed. It's like an instantaneous miracle. Boom, they're back to full strength. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, when I listen to Brother Hagen's over and over his testimony about being healed. He talks about how he laid on that bed. He, went, he died and went to hell a couple of times, and yet when he got a hold of the Word of God, Mark 11, 23 and 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. Then he kept focusing on that scripture, and yet he didn't say that he jumped up out of bed and took off across the room and went on out and started preaching. That's not, that's not what he said. That's right. <laughs> he said that, I remember specifically him talking about getting up and dragging himself out of bed and he hung on to the bed post to just stand there for a few seconds and then he just got back in bed because he couldn't stand up. Right. I think it took him, I don't remember what he said, it took him a week or something before he could get from the bed to the door. Mm -hmm. And yet, in a, some period of time, he actually opened the door, went to the breakfast table, and everybody looked at him like they'd seen the dead raised because they really had. Right. But it was a period of time. And here's where I think people lose what God started in their life is that they'll, oh, I got that book, God's Creative Power for Healing. And it says, Jesus took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Therefore, I refuse to allow sickness to dominate my body. I'm redeemed from the curse. And they get excited about it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's something to get excited about. The Word of God's always something to get excited about. And yet, then a few hours later or a day later, mm -hmm. they're not completely healed. And they say, well, I confessed it. We even, we even get letters in the ministry from people that say, I confess the word three times a day for a month and it didn't work. How do you know it didn't work? <laughs> you go to a doctor and they give you a prescription and they say, take this twice a day for 10 days. Right? Right. right. <laughs> and they don't say, well, take it Take it, take it one day, and if you take this antibiotic one or two days and it doesn't work, then throw it away. That's not what they say, because that's not what happens. That's right. It's got to have time to work in your body, to it's assimilate true. in your body. Like you yes. said, Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is alive, it's active, it's, it's energizing. energizing. It energizes the cells of your body, and yet if the cells of your body have been subjected to toxic thoughts, toxic beliefs, mm -hmm. and all kinds of other things, it takes a while for the right. cells to absorb it. And so that's, I think, where people lose it a lot of times. They stop, so. they give up. Yeah. And that's, that's one right. of the things that I've seen you do. You never give up. <laughs> you never give up. I have seen you not too long, you know, ago when, you know, you, you fell, had an accident, and broke your hip. And yep. that was a long, hard haul. That was <laughs> difficult. And yet, you know, when it came down to it, you could have decided, no, I've just done all I can do. I'm, I'm going to just, you know, sit around in an easy chair because, I, can I tell how old you are? Certainly. <laughs> you can tell by looking. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to get in trouble here, but you're 84 years old. You could have said, I am back then 82, 83, and, and I'm just ready to settle down, so I'm going to sit in this chair right here, and, and I'm not going to do that hard work to get up and walk again. 
And I'm not going to let the devil defeat me. He, Jesus already defeated him, and he, he's not going to get the best of me. Well, you know, I think the <laughs> devil, when you get up in the morning, says to all his imps, run, Peggy Caps is up, get out of the way. <laughs> he might as well. <laughs> but, the, you know, this is so... You know, share it. You can talk the word, but sometimes it really helps for people to hear where somebody else is coming from. It does. It you helps know, me. It, it helped me to understand that Oral Roberts, yes, he was, he was healed. He was restored to health, and yet it, it didn't happen instantly where he went home from that meeting where that man laid his hands on him and the power of God went through him, and he didn't go home and start plowing the field. That's right. <laughs> he still had to rest. You know, right. so, but it's, well, this is really good. It's just so important. I see why the Lord wanted me to have you on, on, on the show today. Just so anointed. You know, Mom, your testimony has just helped so many people uh, over the years. And we're constantly, constantly giving requests from those who either want to hear it again or pass it on to someone to encourage them. So I'm going to make a special offer. We are putting the original television program of your testimony from 1995 and the program we are recording today on a single DVD video. Two programs on one DVD and we are offering that so not only can you watch the programs again, but we are including the book, God's Creative Power for Healing, and the audio version of that book on CD so you can listen to it. Many people want to listen, you know, and confess the word while driving to work or even listen on their smartphone while exercising. These three life-changing items are combined into a package for only $30 with free shipping in the United States. When you order this package, I have instructed our office staff to include a free teaching pamphlet that I wrote called Double Curse, Double Cure. Jesus not only redeemed us from the curse of sin, he redeemed us from the curse of sickness. He took both our sin and our sickness and disease in an order to make us whole and well. You can call now, 1-877-396-9400, ask for package offer, 2519 for $30 and free shipping. If you want to order these items separately, you can call and ask for individual pricing and shipping charges. We also have MP3 downloads and eBooks available on our website at caps.tv. Our goal is to get the good news of the Word of God out to you in every format because God wants you well. Join us next week on this program as we continue the series on healing and health. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.